And we are streaming live. A little bit behind the scenes, just a couple of minutes before we get started on uh, Conscious Conversations on this 21st day of January 2018. My name is Stephen Ray Watts, and I'm glad you're with us. I'm, I'm a little bit ahead of schedule. That could be a dangerous thing. Um, I've got my stream going. We're going to have an excellent night. We're going to be talking about uh, recovery, and we're going to be talking about the good news of the gospel of Jesus Christ and how they meld together, for me especially, and I think they work in perfect harmony with each other. Uh, and I'll tell you my my experience, strength, and hope with the whole idea of I don't I know that I would not be sober today without the grace and the lo unfailing love of my Lord and Savior Jesus. I'm going to tell you how that goes tonight, how it works together. We're going to be talking about a lot of things. So I've got my record on here. Um, got my record on over here. I think all I got to do. Um, I'm gonna go go live on uh, go live on Facebook, and we are live. We're going. We are on, and we've got my, I've got my recording bars over here. I've got so we are live on uh, uh, live Facebook as well. So I'm looking forward to tonight. We just went live stream. Uh, we're getting ready to do conscious conversations on KUHSDenver.com. Got the Mevo happening. Me and the Mevo are we have we have bonded. There's no doubt about it. Um, I'm going to be taking um, my Mevo to uh, California next week. We're going to be talking about that tonight. But before we get that done, I better get ready. Um, we're going to do. Uh, well, we're going to get into the show here momentarily. These uh, oldies are short songs and so it's it's a cool thing about how short they are it gives me time to get uh, get organized so we'll start this show uh, we'll start the show officially in uh, two minutes and 30 seconds that gives me time to get organized get a little bit ahead of the game thank you for joining me uh, hi Rosanna you're right on time I got the uh, information and we're going to be sharing it shortly on the show. Uh, we're I'm so excited to be going to uh, Orange County uh, next week where I'm going to be hanging out with my friends um, Mike and Rosanna Summerall. We're going to have a, a wonderful week um, in uh, Anaheim and uh, Orange County, California, doing all kinds of things. There, I'll be explaining that a little bit more as the night goes on, but the, some of the things that I'm, I'm most excited about uh, are are going to be uh, getting a chance to uh, share and uh, speak at a uh, Celebrate Recovery uh, uh, group. And also the big one is going to be, we're going to be doing Conscious Conversations uh, live from Orange County, from uh, OC Rushing Wind Church. I'm going to tell you a little bit more about that. So I don't get behind myself. I'm going to get ready to roll here. It's been a great weekend, and, and it's it snowed at, today, this morning, early, actually, on the way home from the gig last night. Uh, it snowed here. It wasn't too bad on the way home, and I was very grateful for that. But uh, it's beautiful snow. It's, it reminds me of the old days here in uh, Colorado. We have beautiful um, winter months, and uh, very grateful for them. In everything, give thanks. Okay, so I'm getting first part of this ready to go, and then uh, we're going to have a great time tonight, because I I feel really, uh, last week we had such a powerful uh, guest in um, Tomas Hernandez, um, it was it was um, overwhelming, the response that we got, and, uh, and I know that's what's going to happen um, next week, actually, when we uh, do our live show from uh, OC California. Get ready. We're going to do conscious conversations. Rejoice always. Pray without ceasing. In everything, give thanks.
And here we go. It's going to be a great night. Thank you for joining us. Getting ready to start Conscious Conversations. And welcome to Conscious Conversations on KUHSDenver.com, broadcasting worldwide from the Mile High City of Denver, Colorado. It's Sunday night, January 21st, 2018, and I'm your host, Stephen Ray Watts. I'm so incredibly delighted to be with you last hour's Sunday night and all time zones around the world. Sit back or do whatever you do on a Sunday night or what it, whatever it is wherever you are in this big world of ours and get ready for some uplifting, thought-provoking, and inspiring conversation. As always, and especially tonight, plenty of music and hopefully some spiritual growth over the next two hours. You know, as we say in the rooms of community uh, support for, for addiction recovery, progress, not perfection. That's what we're looking for. Conscious Conversations, right here on KUHSDenver.com. Tonight, I'd like to start off with prayer, as we always do. But tonight also, as last week, I want to say the long version of the serenity prayer. God, grant us the serenity to accept the things we cannot change, the courage to change the things we can, and wisdom to know the difference living one day at a time, enjoying one moment at a time, accepting hardships as the pathway to peace, taking as he did this sinful world as it is and not as I would have it, trusting that he will make all things right if I surrender to his will that I may be reasonably happy in this life and supremely happy with him forever in the next. Amen. And that is our serenity prayer, the long version. You know, it's funny, I've grown to not only love that prayer, but to, well, to use that prayer as a foundation for daily life for living in the moment, for living in his presence. There's something in that serenity prayer for everybody. There's something for every, or virtually every situation that life can bring to us. And that'll be part of our show tonight because I feel that, I feel that strongly about the serenity prayer. I wanna talk about each little part of it. That'll be a, a part of our show tonight as we talk about recovery and the, 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 uh, well, the unbelievable role that Jesus Christ plays in my personal sobriety. And I believe in many people's sobriety. Hi, Annette. It's great to see you. I'm glad you're with us tonight. Thank you for logging on. Well, that's kind of what we're doing tonight. It's kind of a, uh, a show where I'm just going to, uh, well, I'm going to rejoice tonight. Rejoice always. Well, we'd already, we already prayed. We might pray again. Pray without ceasing. And in everything, give thanks. In everything, give thanks. Some people 
think I'm crazy when I say that. How am I going to thank the Lord for something that just happened? Let's say something benign, like a flat tire or something like that. Sometimes some things that are really perceived as, as, as horrible to us, it's very difficult to thank the Lord for. But you know what? It's an exercise in discipline. It's an exercise in obedience. And when we, oh, when we are obedient to our Lord, He shows us how forever faithful He is with His love and grace. Well, we're going to start out tonight with Scripture. A couple of Scriptures I can't resist because this is one of my favorite of all time. I love the Psalms. The Psalms are comforting to me, and I'm not even sure why, and I don't really even need to know why. It's just whenever I read the Psalms, I find comfort, I find strength, I find inspiration, I find healing, everything I need. It's there in the Psalms. It's there in the Word of God. So I'm going to say, I've got a whole minute to say this, and this is Psalm 150. Praise the Lord. Praise God in his sanctuary. Praise him in his mighty firmament. Praise him for his mighty acts. Praise him according to his excellent greatness. Praise him with the sound of the trumpet. Praise him with the lute and the harp. Praise him with the timbrel and dance. Praise him with stringed instruments and flutes. Praise him with loud cymbals. Praise him with clashing cymbals. Let everything that has breath praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Amen. Welcome to Conscious Conversations on KUHSDenver.com. It is Sunday night. January 21st, 2018, and I am your host, Stephen Ray Watts. As always, I'm here in studio in the beautiful Mile High Denver, uh, Mile High City of Denver, Colorado. I'd like to welcome in people from all over the world that are logged in to join us tonight for Conscious Conversations. People from Brookville, Canada, Kuwait, Ottawa, Canada, Delhi, India, Indonesia, Angeles City, Philippines, Bangkok, Thailand, Portland, United States, and many others, and all of our friends in our own backyard and in the, in the, in the Mile High region right here of Colorado. Welcome. I'm so delighted to have you with us this evening. I'm, I'm just, uh, just rejoicing. I'm, I'm happy to be alive tonight. I feel a sense of uh, excitement because we're going to be, uh, I'm going to be taking a trip this next week to California. I'll tell you a little bit more about that as we go on, but I've got a lot of things to talk to, to you about tonight. Um, the things that we're going to be doing next week in California, uh, a big part of the schedule, I guess I'll just say it right up front, we are going to be doing uh, uh, many things. I'm going to be doing a, uh, a speaker uh, visit with a Celebrate Recovery group uh, in Huntington Beach. Uh, very excited about that. Get a chance to, to play and then also share my story. Um, as we say, um, our experience and our, uh, our hope and our strength through, through recovery. Uh, and then also the big one is next week we're going to be uh, doing the Conscious Conversations live. Uh, right from uh, Orange County. We did this last year, and it was uh, from Rushing Wind uh, uh, Church, the OC Rushing Wind Church. They have since uh, moved into um, a new facility, a new church, uh, and it's and I got to see it this last uh, fall when I was there for Catalina Island Jazz Festival. But it's a beautiful church, a beautiful facility, and it's going to be Sunday on January 28th. It's a week from today, and it's going to be it's going to be a great thing. It's going to be a little bit earlier than uh, normal, so I want you to make sure that you you uh, write this down. 
Conscious Conversations is going to air at 8 o'clock, and that is Mountain Time. 8 o'clock Mountain Time. We're going to be broadcasting 7 o'clock Pacific Time uh, in, uh, in Whittier, California. Take this address down if you, if you are listening just to the radio. Um, and, and then also I will try to turn my computer around so you can see. I'll be posting as well and sharing a post that my dear friends, uh, Mike and Rosanna Sumrall, um, have already put together. They've helped me put together this, this show for next week, and they are my uh, special guests. Uh, we're going to be talking about uh, their, their experience and strength and hope, not in, not in recovery, but in living uh, a godly life and showing people how you can live a triumphant, godly, uh, spirit and spirit-filled life and God-filled, Christ-filled life, even when things seem to be horribly wrong and, and when accidents happen. Uh, Michael was in a um, what should have been a fatal motorcycle accident and recovered through the grace of, and, and strength of, of our Lord and Savior and many people who helped him. Rosanna, who not only uh, helped Mike with his recovery, but has had um, accidents of her own and issues of her own that she's had to get through. All the while, this is one of the, my favorite parts about this. They never let me get into this as much as I would like to, but that they have, that they, their marriage and their commitment to each other has strengthened over the years and through these experiences has made their marriage and their lives together even more mingled together as one, just as Jesus, our Heavenly Father, and the Holy Spirit meant the union of matrimony and marriage to be. It's inspiring. And I'm, I'm just, I just can't wait to get out to California and talk with uh, Mike and Rosanna Sumrall and have them share their story again and share every time I hear their story, there's something new in there that we can glean to as to how we can use whatever happens in our life, perceived, whatever we perceive it being good or bad, as triumphant for our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Because remember how he suffered for us to give us the gift of salvation, the gift of forgiveness from our sins. We're going to be talking a little bit later about that gift. It is a real gift of forgiveness. There is no half-baked or half-measures when it comes to the forgiveness that our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ offers us. Our Heavenly Father offers us through Jesus Christ. Think about this. You know, there's been there's been times in my life where you know I've I've had to forgive over and over again. I'll say that I've forgiven, and then maybe something will will happen. And there's something lingering on back there. It's not until not until you forgive, like our heavenly Father forgives through the through the, uh, the sacrifice, the unbelievable gift, the, 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 the gift of all time, the greatest gift of all time is the sacrifice of Jesus Christ coming to live among us and dying on the cross so that our sins could be wiped away and washed away. That is not a half-measured forgiveness that is forgiveness in the full. Jesus paid in full for my sins and for the sins of the world. Hallelujah. So anyway, getting back, we are we're going to be doing uh, it's it, this is going to be just something that I, I'm just so excited about. Uh, it's it's uh, conscious conversations next week uh, live from Rushing Wind Church. That is at 14631 Leffingwell Road, and that is Whittier, California, 90604. You'll be hearing more about it. I'll be uh, previewing it um, all week long on, uh, on uh, Facebook, and I'd like to welcome in our Facebook Live uh, people as well, and uh, people that are checking out the show 
tonight from uh, Facebook and all of the places that we broadcast. Let's see, where do I go from here? Uh, I think that I think what I want to do is I want to thank our sponsors tonight. Um, our sponsors tonight are uh, uh, Live at Jack's. Live at Jack's is a music venue, full service music venue downtown Denver, the mile high city of Denver, Colorado. And you can find music there six nights a week and you all kinds of music. It's it's really geared to to have something for everyone. But also you can book your private parties there. And I, I uh, you know, I have I'm just going on what I've been told by the people that I've talked to that do have their private parties at uh, Live at Jack's. Everyone is uh, treated to an unbelievable view of the 16th Street Mall right in the heart of downtown Denver and a place that is on the third level where people feel safe and where people feel like they are they can celebrate and gather together in safety and with uh, joy in their hearts um, to do to listen to music to uh, to enjoy um, fellowship and, and enjoy uh, being together and whatever their occasion might be so I'd like to thank Live at Jacks for being a sponsor of Conscious Conversations show from the very very get go also want to tell you another sponsor of our show tonight is my band, which is Dotsero. Dotsero is a contemporary jazz group and a group that has been um, my life's work for the last 34 years. A group that I feel uh, so very, very uh, fortunate and grateful to have been a part of from the beginning, being one of the core members along with my brother. And that brings me to a, a moment where I get to say happy birthday to my uh, to my brother David. Uh, it's uh, January 21st, and my brother's having his birthday today. Very, very excited about that. So happy birthday, Dave. Uh, I don't know if you're listening or not, but if you are, uh, I wanted to say happy birthday and make sure that um, everybody out there knows that I uh, had a chance to, uh, to do a shout out to the rockin' redhead. Um, happy birthday, bro. Thank you. Dotsero. Dotsero is going to be a part of, um, not a, it's a new, um, it's something exciting is happening with, with the name Dotsero. And uh, I want to tell you just a little preview. It's becoming a big, a part of a bigger organization. And it's going to be called uh, Dotsero Praise Fellowship. I'll tell you more about that. But remember that name, Dotsero Praise Fellowship. You heard it on January 21st. 2018. I've already started the YouTube channel, so you can go to Dotsero Praise Fellowship on YouTube and find out more about it. I'm building it little by little. Uh, it, there, will, there will be a, a web, full service website and um, many things like that to come. Well, the night has got off to a, a wonderful start, and um, I, I'm, I'm just thrilled to, uh, to be here. It's, it's a show where, where we're going to be talking about uh, many things. But as I said in the open, one of the things that is very important is gratitude. Give thanks. In all things, give thanks. You know, that's, that is easy to do with some things and not so easy to do with others. But just count it as a lesson in discipline, a lesson in obedience, uh, an exercise in both of those. We're going to hear about gratitude from a wonderful Christian, contemporary Christian artist who has been right here in the studio with me. Her name is Christine Marie, and this is her song that's doing great called Gratitude on KUHSDenver.com. Conscious Conversations. Gratitude by Christine Marie. And we're clear on radio uh, for a minute. Um, we're going to be listening. We're listening to Gratitude right now um, by Christine Marie. I hope she's tuning in tonight because I wanted to. I wanted to have her hear her song and how how great it sounds on radio. It's doing great, and uh, she's a uh, dynamic personality, a, a wonderful Christian woman, and uh, she's got so much music in her 
to share with the world. I'm going to load up a few more songs here. And... Okay, so we're getting... Uh, So we loaded up a couple songs here, and then we'll get back to um, our topic. You're, and you're kind of, I can, uh, what is our topic tonight? Well, our topic is, first of all, our topic is always, is always uh, the good news and the gospel of our risen and living Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And I'm going to shout it out to the the nations shout it out with all my heart and soul i'm going to refresh this so i know who we have uh listening tonight we are recording so it's good so we're refreshing there we've got um Brayla. we've got france spring texas indonesia singapore texas Melbourne, Netherlands, Shreveport, United States. And that is what I'm saying is, is this is what we're doing is we're shouting out the good news of Jesus Christ to the nations, to, to throughout the whole world. Uh, we want to shout out, I want to shout out um, the, the good news of Jesus Christ. So the, the angels hear it. So everyone hears it. It's something that is is. I want to make very clear that this isn't the rantings and ravings of, of, a, of a man um, with questionable sanity or with, with uh, um, just, you know, just obsessed about something. No, no. What, what, I'm, what I'm saying here, and I want to really try to reiterate here, is, is to speak the truth that I'm speaking the truth from my heart and soul. And that is, Jesus Christ is the way, the truth, and the life. Um, I'm going to turn this down just a little bit. We'll read that. We'll read that later. But I wanted to, that's one of the, the, the statements I wanted to make tonight was, is, no, I'm not, I'm not ranting. I'm not raving. Um, I am full. I'm of sound mind and body. Um, I have been given um, the gift of, of, a, of, of a, another chance to live a, a, a pr um, purpose-filled life of sobriety that is that I believe is directly given to me from my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Now, the funny thing about it is, is Many times, our Heavenly Father works his, in His mysterious ways through people in our lives. So we have to be very, very, we have to be very, very uh, aware of those people that are being a part of our lives and doing God's work with us and through us for others as well. Many times, God is using us to reach, to, to guide to have compassion on to have mercy on it says right in the word of god i did not come i do not want your sacrifices i want your mercy mercy compassion that is what describes jesus and i'm going to read that to you i have time to do that too and it's uh something that i this is a treasure um, I want to show this to you. This is a, a book that I, um, this is a Bible that I, I purchased. Um, about, oh, I, want to, I want to say I purchased this Bible about uh, two years ago. And the background on, on, this, on this Bible is that I, I bought it. And I thought to myself, it's a recovery Bible. It's a, 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 a Bible that talks about it's the word, it's the living word of God. It, um, the NLT uh, translation, 
but it's also it has um, helpful ad advice from 12 steps uh, on how scriptures work hand in hand with the 12 steps um, and and hi Henry thank you for uh, uh, logging in it's good to see you um, I'm enjoying the show that's Henry Archuleta uh, the owner of KUHS radio and TV our, our fearless leader here uh, thank you for uh, uh, chiming in, Henry. Appreciate that. Uh, but this recovery Bible, it talk, it brings, and I'm going to, I'm going to give you examples tonight, so you know what I'm talking about. It brings examples and commentary based on 12 steps, based on recovery program, and how that works with Scripture, and how those 12 steps. Well, you know what? I, I'm always see those 12 steps have been around forever. They are a part of the Word of God, because God made. Everything, everything belongs to our Heavenly Father. So why wouldn't the 12 steps be a part of that, that living and it be a part of that, that entire, uh, you know, bringing it, bringing recovery and bringing the word of God, bringing faith, our faith, as we say, you know, in, in some, in some of the support rooms in a higher power, well, that's fine. There's God is not offended, trust me, by somebody saying that I, I call it's my higher power. I choose to call my higher power God. You hear me proclaiming my higher power. My Savior is Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ is who gave me the strength, the courage, gave me that moment of clarity through my beautiful wife, Sandra, that, that hung in there with me, doing God's work not giving up on me when it would have been very easily done and justified by the way but that's just what it's all about is that sobriety is ours through our heavenly father and i i stick by that i stick by that so i want to read read scripture tonight um i, I may read this um uh, on on radio too, but this is one of the uh, a scripture that is that is important um, because it, it talks about um, the the Jesus that I that I I love and trust. And one of my favorite parts, one of the, my favorite stories. And listen to the way it begins because there's a key word in here, a key word, and I'll tell you what that is. I bet you, you'll all get it. Here's the key word. As soon as Jesus heard the news, he left in a boat to a, rem to a remote area to be alone. But the crowds heard where he was headed and followed on foot from many towns. Jesus saw the huge crowd as he stepped from the boat, and he had compassion on them and healed their sick. And that is the word, compassion had compassion on him. That evening the disciples came to him and said, This is a remote place, and it's already getting late. Send the crowds away so they can go to the villages and buy food for themselves. But Jesus said, That isn't necessary. You feed them. But we have only five loaves of bread and two fish, they answered. Bring them here, he said. Then he told the people to sit down on the grass. Jesus took the five loaves and the two fish and looked up toward heaven and blessed them. Then breaking the loaves into pieces, he gave the bread to the disciples who distributed it to the people. They all ate as much as they wanted. And afterward, the disciples picked up 12 baskets of leftovers. About 5,000 men were fed that day, in addition to all the women and children. And it goes on to say, Jesus walks on water. Immediately after this, Jesus insisted that, insisted that his disciples get back into the boat and cross to the other side of the lake while he sent the people home. 
After sending them home, he went up into the hills by himself to pray. Night, night fell while he was there alone. Meanwhile, the disciples were in trouble far away from land, for a strong wind had risen, and they were fighting heavy waves. About three o'clock in the morning, Jesus came toward them, walking on the water. When the disciples saw him walking on the water, they were terrified. In their fear, they cried out, It's a ghost! But Jesus spoke to them at once, Don't be afraid. He said, Take courage. I am here. Then Peter called out to him, Lord, if it's really you, tell me to come to you walking on the water. Yes, come, Jesus said. So Peter went over the side of the boat and walked on the water towards Jesus. But when he saw the strong wind and the waves, he was terrified and began to sink. Save me, Lord, he shouted. Jesus immediately reached out and grabbed him. You have so little faith, Jesus said. Why did you doubt me? When they climbed back into the boat, the wind stopped. Then the disciples worshipped him. You really are the Son of God, they exclaimed. After they crossed the lake, they landed at, Gen at Genezareth. When the people recognized Jesus, the news of his arrivals spread quickly throughout the whole area, and soon people were bringing all their sick to be healed. They begged him to let the sick touch at least the fringe of his robe, and all who touched him were healed. This is the Jesus that I know. This is the Son of God. This is the Jesus who suffered so that I could have freedom from sin. Way back when he stepped out of the boat, and he told, and the disciples said, You really are the Son of God, they exclaimed. Pretty powerful stuff. Pretty powerful stuff. You know, I'm supposed to get a uh, commercial in here. I'm going to get one commercial in uh, before we uh, go back to our radio segment. And then we're going to get. Then we're going to be back on radio for just a couple of minutes. We're going to do a devotion, and uh, we're going to talk more about the Serenity Prayer. How Jesus. And I made no bones about it. Um, I go to the community support rooms, and they've been a huge help to me, and I'll tell you how. I make let you make your own decisions on that. Draw your own conclusions. But it's Jesus that keeps me sober and allows me to help others as well. I always, we got one, we got a, we got a commercial coming up. I'm going to change, I'm going to have some fun tonight too. I'm going to uh, change this. Uh, one of my special guests every Sunday night, 10 p.m. to midnight, notwithstanding time. We're going to change the. There we go. <laughs> That's fun. I like it. And welcome back on KUHSDenver.com. You are listening to Conscious Conversations right here on, well, it's, it's uh, Sunday night, uh, January 21st, 2018. And I'm just delighted to be with you. We've got listeners coming uh, that have logged on all the way from Australia down under. I love it when 
people come in from Australia because I always say, I sound like a broken record, uh, that one of these days I'm going to get to Sydney, Australia, and I'm going to be, I'm going to be packing my saxophone somehow, some way. It's, it's been on my list since I was in, uh, I, since I saw a picture of the Sydney Opera House in junior high, I said, someday I'm going to play my saxophone at that place. And I don't know how it's going to happen, but you know what? I'm going to leave that up to the Lord and uh, believe in faith. Because it was in Matthew 9, 27 and further on that Jesus said, do you believe that I'm able to do this? And, and the blind men said, yes, Master, we believe. And Jesus said something very important right then. He said, then be it done for you as you have believed. Jesus evokes the power within us to make the changes to, in our lives that will, make, that will not only affect our own lives in a positive way, but will shine the light so that we are able to shine the, His light through us and the, with the Holy Spirit to the rest of the world. Think about that. That is such an unbelievable gift. I'm, I'm playing around with my, uh, my with the Mevo shots here, um, doing a little co-producing. They say with the Mevo, you've got a uh, uh, television station in your pocket, and uh, it's, it's it kind of is. It's a lot of fun. So we'd like to welcome in people from Nepal. Are you kidding me? Kathmandu, Nepal. Now that's a first. Uh, that that's one I gotta remember. Uh, Otter, Denmark, Perth, Australia, Surrey, India, Rome, United States, Bangalore, India, Tentonville, France, Minsk, Belarus, Jakarta, Indonesia. Welcome to Conscious Conversations tonight on January twenty first, twenty eighteen. My name is Stephen Ray Watts, and I'm having a great night. I'm having a uh, a night where I, uh, you know, I'm just I'm just filled with with the Holy Spirit. I, I feel a sense of of joy, a sense of praise, um, that rejoice always. That's tonight because we're previewing uh, we're previewing a show that we're going to be doing live next week at a at a new time. We're going to be broadcasting at eight o'clock Mountain Standard Time next week instead of 10 p.m., but that'll be uh, 7 o'clock uh, California time, Pacific time, where we're broadcasting from. I'll be telling you a little bit more about that um, as the night goes on. Uh, but I want to I wanna get to, I've got to do a couple of things here. Um, you know, and you know what's crazy about this whole thing? Is in somehow, some way, I am learning how to... Uh, Multitask. Can you believe that? There's no way. We were talking about Jesus and the Jesus that I know, the Jesus that I trust, and that he is a Jesus that is real. I'm not, I'm not crazy. I'm not talking just to jump on the boat or jump on the bandwagon. This is the real living, risen Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And I am speaking from sound mind and body fully in my, in, in my full faculties. And I'm just rejoicing, praising the Lord, worshiping my Holy Savior for giving me sobriety, giving me the chance to live a purpose-filled life and to also witness to the truth, which is Jesus Christ. I wanted to uh, uh, start with a devotion. A couple last couple weeks, we've been so busy uh, with with our message and with our um, with our guests. It's been hard to get um, hard to play even some music, let alone get to our devotions, which I dearly love. Um, but I wanted to get to this one tonight. This is from Jesus Always by Sarah Young, and as always, I I remind people that she writes her devotions as if Jesus were speaking, but she uses scripture 
throughout them all. So it is the, the living word of God mingled into exactly how Jesus might have said it. So this is, you are fully known. I know absolutely everything about you. And I love you with perfect, unfailing love. Many people are searching for greater self-understanding and self-acceptance. Underlying their search is a desire to find someone who truly understands them and accepts them as they are. I am that someone who can fully satisfy this deep-seated longing. It is in your relationship with me that you discover who you really are. I encourage you to be real with me, dropping all pretenses and opening yourself fully to me. As you draw near, utter these inspired words. Search me, O God, and know my heart. Test me and know my anxious thoughts. In the light of my holy gaze, you will see things you need to change. But don't despair. I will help you. Continue resting in my presence, receiving my love that flows freely into you through your openness to me. Take time to let this powerful love soak in deeply, filling up your empty spaces and overflowing into joyous worship. Rejoice greatly, for you are known fully and forever loved. Well, that comes from 1 Corinthians 13, verse 12. Also, Psalm number 147, verse 11, and Psalm 139, verse 23 and 24. I love that devotion because it really says pretty much what I said a couple minutes ago. Rejoice greatly. Rejoice in all things. Rejoice. And that you are fully known and fully loved. And when you accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, you are fully pardoned. You are fully forgiven. And sometimes I think it's one of the greatest gifts of all that we as Christians or, or believers or people that are on this earth trying to live daily, when we're trying to live a godly life and we're trying to, to take Jesus' example and learn to forgive, sometimes I think it's a great, great gift to us also that it's difficult to forgive fully. How can we forgive fully as our Heavenly Father has forgiven fully? Because He gave His one and only Son to die for us so that we could be fully forgiven. You know, I was just thinking about that today. I was pondering that. You know, I, I've forgiven people for things, and yet something will happen inevitably, or something will, be, I'll be reminded of something, or something will, uh, you know, cast a shadow on something, and, and it all of a sudden, that person that I've forgiven, not only once, but maybe a, a hundred times, needs, I need to renew that forgiveness for them. And even if it's, it's it says in, it says, in, it says in the, the, the word of God, how many times shall I forgive, Lord? Seven times 70. That, and I'm not sure if that's the, the perfect, you know what, I'm going to look that up. But, um, but it's something like that, I'm paraphrasing. That gives you the idea that, no, we must forgive over and over again. Where our Heavenly Father has forgiven us fully one time through Jesus Christ, who came down and lived among us, a sinless man, and died for us to take on all of our sin 
in that one act of sacrifice. And we are fully forgiven. It is, it is the truth. It is inspiring. It gives us hope. Think about that. No matter what it is, invite the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ into your heart and you will be forgiven and forgiven fully. Remember this when you endeavor to forgive people in your own life and try to live that, that model. Remember how divine that is when you realize how difficult the exercise of forgiveness can be. But when you do, you will find that freedom, even if you have to forgive and forgive again. It's part of being human, and it's part of the reason why our Heavenly Father gave us the ultimate gift of Jesus Christ. We're getting ready to go to uh, some more music here in just a few minutes. We're going to keep the music flowing tonight because it is, um, well, it's, it's something we can do tonight. I put together some great music for the show and um, want to keep it, keep it flowing. So we're going to be listening to one of my all-time favorites. I never get tired of hearing it. It sounds better every time. How can that be? I don't know. Maybe it's just the joy of the Lord. That is my strength. The joy of the Lord is in the music. This is Amy Grant. Lead me on. And we are clear from radio. Getting ready to listen to Amy Grant. They can't do any better than that. Love this song. Man, this is in the heyday, or at least my day. Okay, we are rolling, and that's we're, we're coming up on uh, getting into the first hour of uh, being done with the first hour of, of conscious conversations already. Can't that's just that's freaky to me. <laughs> I got to get the other songs up um, and then we'll continue our, our talk. And I want to talk about really how I want to, I, when I said you draw your own conclusions, I'm going to tell you why in just a minute. So here's the other songs we're going to hear tonight. Okay. We've got, okay, we'll, we'll, we'll go there. This is a song that You've heard the story before. It's called His Sanctuary. It's off our Telltale CD, Dot Saro's Telltale CD. This is a song that God has gifted to Jesse, Pastor Jesse, my son, and myself, to be able to, in turn, gift it to others. And I've been able to play this song all over the place, all over the, the, the United States, um, in churches, in rehab centers, um, in uh, recovery rooms, uh, virtually all kinds of concerts, from clubs to big concerts um, with thousands of people. We've been able to witness to our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, through this song, His Sanctuary. I hope you like it. And then after that, this is us. My wife's, one of my wife's favorite songs. I hope, I hope she's feeling better. It's a, it's a glorious night on uh, Conscious Conversations. Uh, I want to thank everybody. We have Port Louis, uh, Serbia, Mozambique. I mean, we're having some fun with, uh, with all the places that are coming in tonight. United Kingdom, welcome. Liberty, Philippines, Thailand, also Canada. So here's the deal. Um, and I got to get uh, my commercials going here. I want to get my. Uh, there's the one I want. And I got to get. I want to get my. Uh, uh, I got to get my. There we are. I have to do this one. They work back to back real well. That's my uh, my anti drunk driving. Don't drink and drive. Uh, do not do it. 
there's so many ways not to now as well with Uber and, and Lyft and it's, it's not necessary. So I want to get back to this idea uh, talking about 12 steps in recovery and how, how do we bring that together with, for me, Jesus Christ. And I have people in, in the recovery rooms um, where, you know, they don't necessarily uh, promote that you witness to, to Jesus Christ within that program. Some people do, uh, and they choose to do that. And if they get called out for it, they, they deal with that in their own way. Um, it's, they feel strongly about it. And I say, um, I say hallelujah to them. Uh, I always bring the word of God into the recovery rooms um, and take uh, whatever criticism comes my way. Realize that I can take criticism and it can be uh, my way of saying, uh, you know, that's okay. I, I stand for what I stand for. But then there's also, there are also uh, programs uh, that embrace not only uh, Christianity, but, um, you know, the, uh, well, a Christian life, a godly life as the way, the, the, the way to finding sobriety. So here's what, here's, here's where it comes down to. I had been, when I first got sober in I want to say it was 1995 uh, that I first got sober, and uh, and I was scared uh, at the time. Um, it was there were ch life changes um, that were that were going to happen. Uh, I didn't know exactly what they were. I was going to try to uh, save that marriage with all my heart by by stopping drinking, and uh, you know I was you know it was. It was a it was a bad time, and yet I knew that the only way that that was a possibility and or that I that I really had come to the point of of desperation that I needed to uh, stop drinking, so I did. I stopped drinking for two and a half years, maybe a little bit longer. Well, and I feel like I had good sobriety, and I'll tell you why, because I had sobriety that was based off of a faith in Jesus, faith in my Heavenly Father with the Holy Spirit. And I, and I counted on that because I was, man, it was hard. Um, I wasn't following a 12-step program at that time. Um, I was aware of them, uh, but not firsthand. I wasn't around anybody that was, that was going to a 12-step program. Um, or working any type of a, a program of sobriety. So I was kind of out there on my own. And, uh, um, well, there's, there's my buddy, uh, Brian. Uh, yeah, he says the program of recovery is a God program. I couldn't agree anymore. And this is a man who has um, years and years uh, of, of uh, sobriety, of good sobriety, sobriety based on, on God being um, a huge portion of that. Brian, it's really great that you're uh, listening tonight. I'm glad to see that you uh, um, you chimed in, and it really makes me feel good in, inside. Thank you very much, uh, and I appreciate your comments and in your feedback. Uh, amen to that. Amen to that, brother. But as, as, I, what, what, as I say before, I didn't know, and I had no friends going, Nobody invited me to go to a 12-step meeting at that point or, or to go to um, uh, the rooms of Alcoholics, Alcoholics Anonymous or anything like that or any alternatives of, of, or derivatives of other programs that, that might work. But I did have this faith in God that, um, hey, Brian, good to see you. Thanks for chiming in. Thank you for your comments and your... Uh, your feedback. I really appreciate that. Great to have you on with uh, with us on Conscious Conversations tonight. So I tried to, uh, so I, I had this faith in God. And I always say, and I, and I stand by this, the, the greatest gift 
that I've ever been given is the gift of my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, by my Heavenly Father, who died on the cross to give me freedom from sin and salvation. Second greatest gift I've ever been given was two parents that raised me in a Christian home with a Christian foundation that I could draw on when things went south. I consider myself a modern day prodigal uh, that has had a chance to run back to the loving arms of my Heavenly Father through the grace of Jesus Christ. And this is one of the messages that I'm going to be talking about next week uh, when it comes, when, it, when we, when we, when I go to uh, uh, California to speak at um, Celebrate Recovery out there. I, I'm a modern day prodigal. And so I had that foundation to build off of. And I've got about a minute and a half. And I want you to, I want to leave you with this so, um, you know, people can, can think about this and draw their own conclusions. That was kind of the point that I was, I was coming uh, away with here. So I had that sobriety and I had that Christian faith that was working for me. Life was getting better. Uh, I was think it, I, the, the marriage was not going to continue. Um, but I still had faith that I was still sober and I knew and things were on the upturn and I was making, um, I was able to, my career was going well. And, and then out of the blue, for no reason, really, that I can think of no reason, one day, and I was happy. I need to put that in there. I was happy. Um, it was sobriety where I wasn't, there are many times, you know, those of us in recovery um, that that don't have a, that aren't spiritually fit, fit or have a spiritual foundation or aren't trying to enlarge our spiritual lives each and every day, it's it's easy to be what we call a dry drunk. And that is to be, yeah, sober and abstaining from alcohol, but be miserable. I want to make it clear that, that I wasn't miserable. During those two and a half years, and two and a half years, give or take a little, probably a little bit more. No, I was happy. And things were going well. Life was becoming enjoyable. I was uh, succeeding and uh, I was be doing the best I could as, and I never say that I was a single parent. I'll never say that. I'll never say that I was a single dad. I, I wasn't. I had joint custody um, with um, my son's mother. And so we were raising him in joint custody. And that's another whole story, whether that's the right thing or not. Um, I happen to believe that it was and that it worked out in the long run. But we can even take it. We should take time to talk about that someday. But the point being is that I was happy. Well, what? Uh, so where do we go from there? Where does it go from there? Well, one day, for whatever reason, and I don't even know what the reason was, out of the blue, I must have thought that, well, maybe I've been sober long enough. Maybe I can drink like somebody else, like like uh, uh, just a normal person could. Uh, a person that is not, uh, that has not crossed that line of addiction um, or into alcoholism. And I reached up and I grabbed a beer. As simple as that. And then one beer led to another beer. Okay. Then it was on and it was on in a big way. And I was drinking um, just as much as I was before, which caused me uh, to lose many things, including uh, um, a marriage, um, many career opportunities. And uh, most importantly, was causing me to lose um my, my soul it was causing me to lose my relationship with my Heavenly Father, with Jesus Christ, um, was putting up a barrier. And I always say it was putting up a barrier between uh, my Heavenly Father, Jesus Christ, with the, with the Holy Spirit and myself to where I, I yeah, I, I still was, I still was praying. Matter of fact, I thought I was the best prayer in the world when I was drunk. But the point is, then I started drinking more and more 
and more. And the problem with that is, is then I, I couldn't get that feeling. So that turned into drinking tequila and tequila was my downfall. It was, it, it didn't really matter what I drank. It, it didn't matter at all. I would drink anything. I remember drinking, I remember, uh, uh, drinking warm Zimas, uh, on a, on, a, on a summer day. Can you believe that? And I don't even think people know what Zima is anymore, but it was, it was ridiculous, especially warm. And, but I, so I turned to tequila. Well, when, and tequila literally took control of, of my life and I let it take control of my life. Well, when I got that moment of clarity, when I got to that point of desperation again and I had the gift of desperation but only because my wonderful beautiful wife Sandra hung in there with me long enough for whatever reason that she did maybe just simply because she didn't want to see me die and it was going to go there I have every belief in my heart that's where it was going to end up never would have met or seen my grandchild justice. This song, his sanctuary, his sanctuary never would have happened. Wouldn't have been around for that. But I went to a rehab. I went to West Pines Behavioral Health and did my detox there. And then from there, I went to the community support rooms, very, very famous community support rooms. And that from that point on, for eight and a half years, never had a drink since. And I don't have to knock on wood. No, I'll let you draw your own conclusions. And we'll talk more about that when we come back. Think about that. I always say, well, I had the Lord in both times. Something about the fellowship, something about the fellowship of like-minded people within rooms of recovery. And there's all kinds of programs. I happen to uh, work with one well-known program that's been made all the difference with the fellowship and the 12 steps that it teaches. But there is many ways to sobriety and whatever way you find sobriety, as long as you bring your heavenly father, God almighty, and for me, Jesus Christ, my Lord and savior, you have that guarantee that if you follow those simple steps and you give your life and your sobriety to your Lord and Savior, you can be confident that you will be sober each and every day, long term. And with that, be given the power. And it's an amazing, it's amazing, it's an amazing gift. Be given the power to help others through service, through witness, through testimony, through hope, through sharing what you've gone through so that when that person goes through the same thing and is trying to get through it and look back on it, this time sober, they'll be able to do that. Or they'll be able to draw on the strength that you gave them. That's what it is about when you have like-minded people helping each other. It's literally God working through his children. What an what a what an inspiration. I gotta get some uh some songs up here.
Posted by the National Highway Traffic Safety Administration and the Ag Council. This has been a public service announcement from your friends at kuhsdenver.com. And you are listening. And you are listening to Conscious Conversations. I haven't done that in a, in a few uh, in a few weeks now where I forgot to turn the mic up. You know what? It's a good reminder because, you know, it's this is all uh, trying to do the best you can. Um, I used to do that all the time and make that mistake. So it's kind of brings back good memories. This is show number 98. I can't believe that. That, that doesn't even seem possible that it could already have been, um, you know, 98 uh, shows of Conscious Conversations. And I remember that back in the very, very early, um, you know, months or weeks of, of Conscious Conversations, how difficult it was to, to multitask. And I don't think I'm ever going to be uh, tagged a, uh, a multitasker because that's just not me. Um, but I'm getting better all the time. I'm starting to scare myself. But then I'll get reminded every once in a while with that. So anyway, welcome back to uh, uh, Conscious Conversations. We have uh, listeners from all over the world, the Philippines, Canada, Spain, um, Comanche, United States, uh, Pakistan, uh, many others. And we are talking about sobriety tonight. We're talking about two things that are that at the focal point of my life. Um, that is my sobriety. Um, and, and, I, and I'm already put it in the wrong order. That is my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. The good news of Jesus Christ, who is the truth, who is the way, who is the life. And he has given me a life of sobriety. That's the proper order. This is something uh, I'm, I'm very, very um, grateful for. Uh, not only getting a chance to do this show, and um, I didn't, uh, you know, I, was, I knew I was going to share part of my story tonight um, with this idea. But the most important part of that story is to uh, this idea of the, uh, that Jesus has made it possible for me not only to surrender, but to live in the moment, to live life day to day, one day at a time, as we say, and also re knowing that he is there constantly. There is an absolute 24 seven, um, all consuming presence with me at all times. He never leaves. There are times when I'll break free, I'll, I'll break away and forget or stop keeping him as the, the, the focal point or the, you know, keeping him as the um, center of, of my daily, my daily and moment to moment experience. That's my doing, not his. We were talking about, um, if we get to it, I'll, I'll, what we were talking about off um, while the music was playing was I had sobriety for two and a half years, almost three years um, before, and, and it was good sobriety. And yet, and, and, and I had it, it was, the reason it was good sobriety is because I did have that foundation of faith. But then it was then it was just as easy to to go back and pick up relapse, if you will, um, pick up that drink again um, because I stopped trusting in my Lord, or I, or I got I got overconfident, began to think that it I, I began to take charge of my life again instead of surrendering it to my Lord. Came back, was able to find my way back somehow due to my wife, Sandra, who had compassion on me, like we were talking about, found that eensy weensy moment of clarity, and I was able to respond to it. And I know it was Jesus who was leading me there. He was giving me the chance of a modern day prodigal to run back to my heavenly father, who was running towards me with open arms. And that's no joke. That is exactly what happened. The second time around, I was able to find my way from West Pines Behavioral Health into the rooms, um, the community support rooms um, of recovery. 
And being involved with going to meetings, working 12 steps, and also uh, helping others, um, also the fellowship of, of being with like-minded people and sharing our experience, strength, and hope with each other has made the difference. And to date, I have, well, next next Sunday night, um, yeah, I, I didn't know it really know this, sun, next Sunday night when we're doing our show live from uh, Anaheim, uh, uh, no, from Whittier, uh, the Russian Wind Church, I'll be celebrating exactly um, eight and a half years on the 28th, eight and a half years sobriety. So that's something to celebrate, something I'm looking forward to. I'm glad I thought about that because that is just gives me more reason to rejoice, more reason to rejoice in the goodness, the greatness, the unfailing, the omnipotent, the sublime uh, love of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, Heavenly Father with the Holy Spirit, the Holy Trinity. I'm going to do another uh, uh, devotion because I, I really wanted to, to get this. Uh, I, wanted, I wanted to do devotions tonight because um, we haven't had a chance to really do them in the last. And I'm having fun um, with my, uh, with the, with the, uh, the Mevo. I'm going to switch to another shot here real quick. And um, go there and see. Uh, yeah, there we have it. Um, this is this is from Grace for Today One Minute Devotions. That's a little devotional uh, that I I found uh, when I when I was well. I'll tell you where I found the bookstores in in Orange County at uh, at the airport. Anyway, here we go. I need to before we do that. Um, I got to make sure that I got one thing going on and I got to get my songs going again. Um, that's what I wanted to play too. So one second as I, okay. And we'll still have plenty of time. Good. So we're getting to this devotion. Forgive me for my, uh, uh, disorganization on that. This is Grace for Today, One Minute Devotions. Live fully. We pray this in order that you may live a life worthy of the Lord and may please Him in every way, bearing fruit in every good work, growing in the knowledge of God. That is the living word of God, scripture from Colossians 1, verse 10. And here's the devotional. People often seem to be bored or dissatisfied with life. Every moment of Jesus' life on earth was filled with purpose and meaning. And in everything he did the will of the Father and brought glory and honor to his name. God expects you to follow Jesus' footsteps right here and now. Enter into his holy presence often and allow him to fill your life with new purpose, new goals, and also new joy. Let your attitude be the same as Jesus'. Fulfill his will and obey him in all things, and your life will will yield a rich harvest that will glorify God. And here's the prayer that goes along with that. Perfect example and redeemer. Through you, I can rejoice in the blessed knowledge that I can experience true life in all its richness and fullness. Amen. Once again, that is from Grace for Today, One Minute Devotions. I found that little devotional in the little bookstore in the John Wayne Airport in uh, Orange County. 
and I go back there each time. I'll go back there again um, next week as well. Uh, when I either, most likely when I'm returning home on Tuesday, uh, the following Tuesday, um, I think it's the 30th or 31st. Um, it'll be the 30th. Uh, <laughs> that's the uh, perfectionist in me. Anyway, I'll return there, and hopefully they'll have some new inspiring books. They also they always have devotionals. They always have um, inspirational material for reading. I, I picked up a book um, by uh, Charles Spurgeon, um, uh, a book on the Holy Spirit that I read on the the flight home um, and continuing days when I got back, and it was just just um, a phenomenal book. Getting back to this little devotional, really what it does is it, it reiterates something that's very important to me that we talked about tonight. When we talked about, it's, it's, you know, my sobriety, um, there are things that I need to do to obey each and every day. I need to do those and follow the rules of, of the steps. Sometimes we call them suggestions, but when for me, they have to be rules. They have to be, uh, I have to set them down as a discipline. An exercise in discipline, an exercise in in obeying. When I do that, when I do that, if, as it says here, as it says here, fulfill his will and obey him in all things, and your life will yield a rich harvest that will glorify God. When we enter into these exercises of discipline, of faith, discipline, of spiritual growth, and trying to enlarge our spiritual life, in the same way, by obeying his way for us, we do open ourselves up to life becoming abundantly more full and more powerful, and we are more able to serve and help our fellow man. And that's what it's all about. This is Amazing Grace on Conscious Conversations, KUHSDenver.com. And we're clear from radio, but still streaming and streaming with a purpose. I'm going to go ahead and uh, we're going to refresh over here. And I always like to say Sri Lanka when it happens because I, <laughs> I like to say Sri Lanka. And welcome Sri Lanka, Sweden, uh, Madrid. Uh, Guangdon. You know, I love it when that happens. I don't know if I've ever heard of that. Shenzhen, Guangdong, Singapore, Mountain View, California, Bucharest. And folks from all over Canada, Busto Garolfo, Italy. And that and when I whenever we welcome in Italy uh, into uh, conscious conversations, um, I always say Here's my San Pellegrino and and say cheers. This is my drink of choice these days and it's working great. Thanks to my heavenly Father and Jesus Christ. Well, we've got a lot going on here tonight. And I wondered if if you if if you drew your own conclusions as we get back to that and I'll, and I'll get back to that in just a moment. I'm going to go ahead and um, i got to get my other songs going here. It's 1121 here in the Mile High City of Denver, Colorado. And we are, this show is just going by at a, at a, a rate that's, um, well, it normally is. Um, I enjoy this so very, very much. Getting a chance to visit, um, share, hopefully um, say something, maybe the Lord will let me have a part of saying something that might maybe convince or, or uh, inspire or persuade somebody who might be thinking that they need to do something about their, their alcoholism or their addiction and or maybe just find their way back to the Lord and just simply ask Jesus, help me, Lord. Simply help me. I can't do it, but I know you can. Surrender. 
surrender. He's right there. I got to find out what the next songs are coming up. Oh, I love this next song. Okay, and then, and we have to do, uh, we have to do this one also. We were talking about this scripture, um, and we're going to talk about this in just a minute too. Uh, it's important that we talk about the, uh, the, the Life Recovery Bible. There we go. I'm looking for that song. We, we read the, uh, the scripture about uh, St. Peter, who at the time, the Apostle Peter, who stepped out of the boat in faith and was actually walking on the water. Do I believe this actually really happened? With all my heart. Especially since it was in the Gospel of Matthew, who was there. And... Honesty, the think about the the and as it says in the in the Gospel of John that only just a very small portion of the miracles that Jesus performed were written down in written form. This is just one of them. But Peter stepped out of the boat in faith and was actually walking on water, just like Jesus was. And that, that, that affirms also what, what he was saying in, in Matthew 9, 27. It's saying, be it done for you as you believe. Be it done for you as you believe. He was, Jesus was always evoking the power in us, trying to awaken the power that we have in us. And for us to acknowledge that that is power that comes from the Lord. That is the ability to tap into the creator of the universe, tap into his love, tap into his omnipotent, omniscient power, and realize these things and do these things and greater things than this will you do. Also, Jesus said. It's just amazing. And I love that part of it. So when it comes back down to what we were talking about before, and I'm going to get, um, I'm going to give you an example here out of this this Bible, and I'm kind of um, I'm a little bit scattered tonight, but I, I'm not really that worried about it because uh, more than being scattered, I'm passionate and I'm I'm excited and I and I'm I'm just I'm chomping at the bit. I can't wait to go to California this week and be with my friends Mike and Rosanna Summerall. Um, I get to go to the NAM show, which is the National Association of Music Merchandisers, um, and be with um, musicians from all over the world. Uh, but I get to also be there as as a as a voice of of witness, a voice of witness to my Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. And believe you me, I will get to spread that word, spread that gospel, and I will do it boldly, and I'll do it with my heart. Many times you find that the inadequacies, the weaknesses that you have, or I feel as a person, even in my alcoholism, the weaknesses, the inadequacies, the things I feel are my shortcomings. The Lord can use to build strength in someone else. The Lord can use these broken people as I was a broken person to shed light, his light, to the world and give people a light to find their way to salvation, to find their way to, to Jesus and also recovery. And it'll be a recovery that, it'll be a recovery and a sobriety that will be astounding. It will be sublime. I can't come up with enough words that will show what this the happiness, the joy, the, the rejoicing um, that this sobriety will be, this life of purpose, this life of service. Because after all, Jesus came here to serve.
serve. And he, and he became our servant and ultimately died for our sins. Well, I've been talking about, oh, before I get there, I got to, um, before I get there, I want to, I want to make the point of, okay, you, I said, draw your own conclusions. What, what will your conclusions be? Well, I had two and a half years of sobriety. I had my faith in God and it was good sobriety. And yet I drank again. So what is the, what is the deal? Well, then I, then I found sobriety again, thanks to the Lord my wife, and a moment of clarity that I was able to respond to. Thank God. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Because without that little moment of clarity, it could have, it would have gone really bad. Well, here's the, the difference. I went to the rooms of recovery and I got to be around and learn the, how to live and, and live by the 12 steps of recovery and be able to respond to that way of life and also dedicate myself to service, to trying to help others and trying to have the kind of sobriety that I can give away as something somebody, somebody might want. Because nobody wants sobriety. Nobody wants something that you don't have. And nobody wants to have a life that's miserable. Uh, no, they want it. They want a. Tri they, if they see something within you, they want to see something triumphant. They want to see the kind of life that is somebody who has been given a gift, the ultimate gift of being able to arrest their alcoholism, arrest their addiction, put their faith in God, put their faith as I have in Jesus Christ. And in turn, be get, been given this gift of, of sobriety, been given a gift of a joyous, purpose-filled life where I can give thanks in everything. That, that to me is, is amazing. Give you a quick example here. Let me get my, so I'm ready to go up here with my next segment. We're running out of segments and that's a good thing because, you know, that means the show's flowing along. In this, in this Bible, uh, I wanted to read you an excerpt. We read, um, and, and I'll read, we, we read the chapter on, as, as Jesus walked on water. But I wanted to read you this. If we wait for our fears to go away before we take steps, we will never make significant progress in recovery. Courage isn't the absence of fear. Courage means that we take advantage of, of the little strength we find within ourselves, and we find little ways to encourage ourselves, and that we stubbornly stick to God's program for us. Courage doesn't mean being free from fear. It means finding enough strength to take the next step. The disciples were terrified when they saw Jesus walk on water. Then Peter called to him, Lord, if it's really you, tell me to come to you walking on the water. Yes, come, said Jesus. So Peter went over the side of the boat and walked on the water towards Jesus. But when he saw this, and when he saw the strong wind and the waves, he was terrified and began to sink. He doubted. Save me, Lord, he shouted. Jesus immediately reached out and grabbed him. Peter, Peter gathered up enough courage to take one step and venture out into a new experience. When he got in over his head, he called out to Jesus and found the help he needed. We only need to summon courage to take the next step. This doesn't mean that we won't be afraid or don't need help. It does mean that with God's help, we can make it. All we need is the courage to just take one more step. And that's as we listen to this song that I wrote in honor of that verse in Matthew. This is called Stepping Out of the Boat.
and I was just able, just able to uh, get a uh, commercial in that I needed to get in or wanted to get in uh, before we go to our, our next segment. So we're, and I can't forget to turn up my mic. I was getting overconfidence. Unconditional love of our Lord and Savior. Here we go. Find out more every Sunday night right here. Going live on radio. That's what I usually tell my guests. I guess I'm the guest tonight. Conscious Conversation. Sundays, 10 p.m. Mountain Standard Time. That's Conscious Conversation. 10 p.m. Mountain Standard Time. Every Sunday night right here on KUHFDenver.com. And you are listening to Conscious Conversations. My name is Stephen Ray Watts, and um, I'm just so delighted to be with you tonight here in the Mile High City of Denver, Colorado, uh, the place of my birth, a uh, place that I love dearly, a place that has changed, um, but that's for another day. I am uh, just rejoicing. Um, I'm, I'm praising the Lord tonight. I'm in, in a mood of absolute jubilation. Um, in sobriety and in just life in general, I get the unbelievable opportunity of getting a chance to be with my friends Mike and, and Rosanna Summerall next week in, uh, in Orange County in, in Anaheim, California, where we're going to be doing a lot of different things. But first and foremost, we're going to be doing Conscious Conversations live from uh, OC Rushing Wind Church next Sunday night. January 28th, 2018, where Mike and Rosanna are going to be talking about um, their their experience and and their their story of of trusting God um, in in the face of what seemed to be um, all being lost and showing how they triumphed because of their faith and their trust, putting everything that they have in their hearts and souls into Jesus and, and faith in what he can do in their lives. It's just an amazing story. You want to, you want to hear it. And we're going to be uh, doing a concert early. And, uh, but then the live show is going to start at, at a live conscious conversation show with Mike and Rosanna Summerall is going to be at 7 PM, which is 8 PM mountain standard time. So next week, um, 8 PM, you want to tune in. For conscious conversations. We're going to be doing this at OC Rushing Wind Church at 14631. That can't be the right way to say that. Let's put it this way. 14631 Leffingwell Road. That's better. And it's in Whittier, California, 90604. Can't wait for it. I'm just so excited about it. Also going to be visiting a Celebrate Recovery group and or two and also going to the NAM show, which I'll be talking about all week long on Facebook. But so I hope you'll tune in next week. It's going to be an absolute blast. Um, we're going to get to one more uh, devotion here in this segment. But I want to, before I do that, for those of, of, of you out there that are, are in recovery uh, or thinking about recovery or um, thinking about something to, to give to somebody in recovery, I found this gem, um, and I think it's, I, I kind of feel silly about it because I think most of the people in the rooms of recovery where I go um, and other places um, know about this, but I found this, this, it's called the Life Recovery Bible, and it's, uh, the, it's the NLT translation of the Living Word of God, but this book has, it's, I decided to read it this year give you a brief, brief background. Um, when I got sober in uh, 2009, it was a personal goal of mine that I decided that I, that I wanted to make my first priority, uh, one of my first priorities in life, um, if not the first priority in life, to read 
the Bible from cover to cover every single year. And so far, I've been able to uh, stay true to that uh, to that goal of mine. And it hasn't been hard to do because it's something that I'm very passionate about. When I begin to read the living word of God, everything else seems to go away. And I'm, and I'm in a world of, of God's uh, love, presence, and uh, promises, and hope, and eternal love. And so that's not hard to do. But when I found this this Bible, I said, oh, I'll give it a cho- I'll give it a chance this year. I bought it a couple years ago. And and it's got so much, um, it's kind of like a workbook along with it. It has so many uh, commentaries about how scripture um, follows and works right along with um, with 12 steps and also recovery ideal ideologies. And it's, I believe this is just, this is like the find of the, I, I, I just, I'm just eating this up. I love it. So it's the Life Recovery Bible. I wanted to share that with you because it's very, very, um, it's something, when you find something like this and it really, it speaks to you, you want to share. You want to make sure that maybe something in it will help somebody else. For it certainly has given me um, not only um, inspiration, but just overwhelming joy within this process of recovery and com- it was the idea of the show is combining the idea of the God's word, his will, and his way into the 12 steps of recovery and those ideas as a way of life, along with the fellowship and being in and around getting inspiration from the like-minded people within this, within our uh recovery community. Um, Incredibly inspiring. Uh, Love it. Love it. Love it. Um, I got to figure out what I'm doing here because I know I got to, oh, I'm going to, I got to go to music here. I'm doing this like I did it before. Um, We heard stepping out of the boat. The reason we heard that is because we were talking about scripture where Peter uh, stepped over the side of the boat in faith when he said, bid me come to you as you are, Jesus walking on the water and he was walking on the water it's incredible but that's what stepping out of the boat is about we're going to have some more music music here in a minute and this is going to be a song called the perfect gift which has two meanings but i'll tell you about that in a little while first we'll get to a devotion we've been able to do some devotions tonight that that are uh and i'm very very grateful um, for that. This is again from Jesus Always by Sarah Young. And again, I always want to remember because in case somebody's just tuning in uh, from all over the world, Spain, Canada, France, Kinley Park, United States, uh, Lampur, Malaysia, um, Anamase, France, I hope I said that right, Lida, Spain. I want to make sure that people know that this is written by Sarah Young, as if Jesus were speaking. Don't be afraid to face your sins. Except for me, there has never been a sinless person. If you claim to be without sin, you deceive yourself and evade the truth. It's actually quite freeing to confess your sins, knowing that I will forgive you and purify you from all unrighteousness. The good news is that I have redeemed you, paid the full penalty for all your sins. When you confess your wrongdoings, you are aligning yourself with the truth. Since I myself am the truth, your confession draws you closer to me. It also sets you free from nagging guilt feelings. When you realize you have sinned in your thoughts, words, or actions, admit it immediately. Your confession need not be lengthy or eloquent. It can be as simple as, forgive me, 
and cleanse me, Lord. I'm going to say that again. It can be as simple as forgive me and cleanse me, Lord. I have already done the hard part, dying on the cross for your sins. Your part is to live in the light of the truth. I, your Savior, am the light of the world. Hallelujah. And she bases that off these scriptures. 1 John 1, 8 and 9. Gospel of John 14, verse 6. New King James Version. And John 8, verse 32. John 8, verse 12. So if we look up, and I was trying to find it out. Um, I was trying to find this um, a little while ago. Um, if we go to John, um, it at the beginning of our broadcast, and I was telling you what that Jesus is the truth and it says it right there in that in that devotional and i want to show you this is an important scripture um, and it's very simple jesus told them i am the way the truth and the life no one can come to the father except through me. This is the truth. I believe this is fact. These are words that come from Jesus, who is the same yesterday, today, and always. Hebrews 13, 8. That scripture really says what I've been trying to get to. How can you go wrong when you trust your life? your future, your new beginning in sobriety, or your sobriety where you might be struggling to find that, that gift of truth, of serenity, it's right there in Jesus Christ. Invite him into your heart. Invite him into your recovery and watch the things that will happen if you do that, you will find that your, your recovery will be not only easier, but it will be full of joy, purpose, passion, and service to your fellow man. It will be, and I segue, and this is just perfect, it will be the perfect gift. And that's the song coming up on KUHSDenver.com by Dotsero. This is one of my favorites, The Perfect Gift. And we're free from radio for just a minute. We're going to have to find a way as I bring up my mic. Yeah. As we bring up the mic, we're going to find a way to... Uh, wrap up because we're at that time of the, of the evening. Um, it's been an incredible night. It's really been an incredible night. I'm, tr I'm, we, we, so the, the, the conclusions, I know I asked you to draw your own conclusions, but my conclusions are this, that being with like-minded people in the rooms of recovery and uh, the community of recovery, whether it's no matter what program um, a person follows, whether it be uh, Celebrate Recovery, whether it be um, in Alcoholics Anonymous, if it were, um, you know, um, NA or other uh, forms of recovery, it doesn't matter what way you find your way to recovery, it doesn't matter. What matters is recovery. What matters is is to is to find freedom from the the shackles the bonds of addiction find that freedom and then invite almighty god your heavenly father jesus christ into your life so that you can live and live abundantly and live with purpose 
joy, in service to your fellow man, and in full, in full fulfillment of what you had always hoped your life would be like. It's just amazing. Once again, I really, I really, um, I, I, I just really uh, recommend this um, Life Recovery Bible. I read it. Um, I'm going to finish it this year, um, if, if God willing. Um, I'm going to have to get lots of those uh, uh, highlighters, um, the kind that are like like crayons, because I'm, I'm highlighting just about everything. I might as well just highlight the whole thing. It's kind of silly. I guess that's uh, probably um, a little bit of the uh, um, addict, um, alcoholic in me, but it doesn't matter. What matters is, is that there is happiness and happiness in the midst of sadness sometimes because sadness and dealing with pain and hurt is a part of life it's a part of life that god gives us the ability to find coping mechanisms not only through his our our family friends and and associates god's other children but we find it through his living word in scripture and that's why it's my passion and it's my joy to try to fulfill that goal of mine, of reading uh, God's living word from cover to cover, uh, this great adventure. You know, if you were, if you're, I, I'm just going to say it, challenge yourself here for a second, because I've, I've often thought this, you know, in this world of ours where we're constantly coming up with new action movies and movies of of grandeur with these great adventure stories and these great, I know I'm not gonna be the first one that ever said this, I promise you that, but I'm gonna say it anyway, is that uh, challenge yourself, test yourself, ask, go, go get a Bible, any Bible, and read the first book, Genesis. And I defy you to find any adventure movie out there that can even come close to the adventure of and the the life experiences and the the ups and downs and the miracles and the catastrophes and the unbelievable cataclysmic um events that happen in genesis genesis it's the greatest adventure story you've ever read in your life that's a fact i'm gonna do one more song And I think we'll do this one. We'll do one more song, and then we'll we'll at that point we'll we'll close it out uh, for for the evening. It's been a great show, and if with with that idea, I'll I'll have a, I'll have another chance to give you a couple more uh, a couple more uh, examples in here, which is which is important. There are a few more examples in here. Uh, that I think are, are really great. Okay, get for, for instance, we read this chapter 14. Chapter 14 of Matthew is one of my favorite chapters. Um, it, it just stands out to me as, as a chapter that, um, that I really like. We must always fight the preconceived notion that others have of us we might leave our um, we might leave our dysfunctional family or group or friends and enter a successful recovery program when we return we shouldn't be surprised to find that others will ignore our message of recovery saying that we are just so and so or just the kid they went to school with they won't listen to us because we are too close to who we were because they are too close to who we were and cannot see who we have become through God's grace. As we share our recovery story with those who know our past, it may take time to convince them of our sincerity and our new life. And so we have to be patient with those that are close to us. I'll make sure to turn this down just a hat, a smidgen here.
Okay, and we're listening to Lost and Found. So I'm finding, um, I want to find some other examples here. Um, And as we get to the end of the show, I'm just trying to find um, something that struck me. Okay, here's what here's what I, I would like to share. Also, uh, from from centuries earlier, the prophet Isaiah had described the Messiah in Isaiah 42, 1 through 4. Matthew recognized how Jesus fulfilled that prophecy. This passage offers a powerful message of hope for those of us in recovery. Jesus, the Messiah, is both our servant and our leader. He is strong enough to lead and judge the nations, yet tender enough to care for the weak and helpless. He is the world's hope for salvation and our hope for recovery. Only through Jesus Christ can offer us, only God through Jesus Christ can offer us the power we need for recovery. If we look to any other source for help, our recovery will be limited at best. Secular, New Age, and even occult approaches to recovery are available. It is tragic that Christ-centered recovery is often dubbed by many who need it the most, is often doubted by many who need it the most. I'm going to say that again. It is, tra it is tragic that Christ-centered recovery is often doubted by many who need it the most, but it is even more tragic when people who find deliverance through Christ are later told that it is all a lie. God's way of recovery is the way of Jesus Christ. Through him, we receive the power we need for recovery and restoration. And I might add, I just wanted to add to that, um, the power to serve, to the power to be an example, to serve as Jesus did. The greatest gift uh, in, in recovery is, is getting to serve and to, as we say, give it away. If we have this recovery that hopefully somebody else will look at and say, that's what I, that's the kind of joyful, jubilant, uh, triumphant sobriety I want to have, then they'll seek, they'll seek it. And we will have the power to transmit it to them by just example and by the Holy Spirit who lives within us. Well, I've got to go ahead and sign off for another show of Conscious Conversations. And we will be live from California, OC Rushing Wind Church next week in Whittier, California. Good night, Rosanna. We'll see you next week. Love you very much. And Mike as well. Have a great week. We'll see you soon.
Well, it has been a wonderful night, Unconscious Conversations. I've enjoyed it thoroughly. Uh, even though I did not have a guest this evening, you know what? It was a, a show that I needed to do, a show that I needed to share part of my story, um, a part of my story that, that uh, well, it, it, I, I hope is in some way inspiring. Um, I know it's inspiring to me that I'm going to be in California next week with my friends Mike and uh, Rosanna Summerall. And the night that we're going to be doing Conscious Conversations from uh, OC Rushing Wind Church in Whittier, I'll be celebrating uh, eight and a half years. How did that happen? Uh, eight and a half years on the 28th of, of January sobriety. How did that happen? I'll tell you how that happened. Through Jesus Christ's grace, his love, his, his, my, his, his grace and good people who did the work of God in and around me through the rooms of recovery. I'd like to thank everybody for listening to Conscious Conversations this evening. Very important, I want a shout out to my soulmate, Sandra. I love you, Sandra, with all my heart and soul. And I thank you for being the best part of my life. And I also want to thank you for being literally the hardest working person I've ever known in my entire life. And that's just a fact. We're asking for worldwide prayer for all of those who are suffering and trying to overcome debilitating health issues like cancer and many other issues. Ronnie, Rich, and Stephanie, Scott, and so many others who are facing these challenges medically and physically in their lives. Strengthen their souls and their hearts, Lord, through the unbelievable power and compassion of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. All those who are suffering from struggling from substance use disorder as well. So many out there. And we, we pray for each and every one of them to find their way and to find their way to sobriety, find their way to Jesus, and then they will have something that will last forever. Well, next week, I've already said it, and uh, Dot Sarah's not playing next week. Well, that's because, well, part of Dot Sarah, me, it's going to be in California. I am playing next week. I'm going to be playing at the uh, National Association of Music uh, Merchandisers um, Convention in Anaheim. And also uh, going to be doing uh, some playing at, uh, at OC um, Rushing Wind Church, uh, doing a celebration of Conscious Conversations and, uh, and also celebrate recovery. Well, tonight... Our benediction reads like this from 2 Thessalonians 2, 16 and 17. May the Lord Jesus Christ himself and God our Father who loved us and by his grace gave us eternal encouragement and good hope. Encourage your hearts and strengthen you in every good deed and word. Amen. And in the words of Charles Dickens, from his famous story that is, in many ways, my own story, a story of redemption, a story of reclamation. God bless us, everyone. For Conscious Conversations, I'm Stephen Ray Watts. Good night.
And we're going to say good night from Denver, Colorado, the Mile High City of Den Denver, Colorado. We say good night on live Facebook. Thank you all for joining me tonight for your comments and feedback. Uh, I love you all very much. Uh, keep faith. Go out and do God's work, even with a smile. It's as simple as that. From For Conscious Conversations, I'm Stephen Ray Watts. I'll talk to you next week. I'll be in California. I'll be praying for you, and I hope you'll be praying for me. Good night. God bless.